In this daily drop, I'm going to be talking about some of the products at NAB 2024 that had me and have me the most excited. So let's go. All right, I am back from NAB 2024, and the voice is, it's almost back to normal. And yesterday, when I did the weekly live stream, I was just trying to get through it. I was so tired. I had gotten up at about 4.30 in the morning, traveled all day, got in about 45 minutes before the live stream, and then right after, crashed for about two hours. I never do that. Then a good night's sleep. I feel like a human being again, and I am excited to talk about the show. Now, there was a lot of great stuff there in what I would call standard product categories. We saw, everybody saw, if they were walking around, solutions from companies like Aperture with their InfiniMats. Nanlite had some really cool additions to the Pavo Slim line, one of them called the 240C, which is basically two one by two panels that fold into each other, and then they just fold out and, and just get attached to a stand via a yoke. Uh, battery technology, really cool stuff there from companies like Small Rig with Caleb Pike's um, battery, that 212 watt battery with all of these connections. PD power is definitely a big thing. Core had some amazing battery technology, which looked ridiculous. Who would have thunk that battery technology would be sexy? Well, it is, and it's looking pretty cool. And as we move away from standard generators, we're starting to see these larger battery solutions to power cameras, lights, etc. And also a shrinking of the size of the smaller batteries with just ridiculous amount of output and fast charging, so on and so forth. In addition to that, companies like YC Onion and um, Small Rig have some very cool solutions when it comes to monopods and tripods. Potato Jet's tripod solution, while there's no price yet on that, is really interesting. And there was sort of a similar type of mechanism on YC Onion's new monopod, where you basically just squeeze and then either multiple legs or one single leg, if it's a monopod, can be adjusted in terms of height. So I'm really excited about that. I think we're seeing a little bit of, not a revolution, but an evolution in tripods and monopods. So that was pretty exciting. X4 from Insta360, their new 8K 360 camera looked really interesting to me, primarily from the standpoint of whether or not there might be enough dynamic range in that to create some environments for virtual production. Really like the Airglow from DOP Choice. I thought that was pretty awesome. Obviously the 12K camera from Blackmagic Design. The Pixis camera, the 6K one, I thought was really interesting, but I think I talked about it a little bit during the live stream. It wasn't as exciting to me once I saw the camera. No built-in NDs, a fixed screen on the side of the camera body. And then if you want to adapt that battery bay, to something like V-mount. There's a lot of ports on either side of that, so I have a feeling those would get blocked. Now, I think at less than $3,000 US that the Pixis is still a very interesting camera. It has reference in and in a studio style uh, application for virtual production and for other types of things. I think it'll be very interesting. But the 12K camera for sure. Small HD had the Quantum 32, which is a reference monitor for both production and post, which is coming in price point wise very, very competitively. In fact, more than competitively. I'm not going out tomorrow and spending $12,000 on a reference monitor. But if you compare what they're doing with this Samsung technology, um, with the quantum dot technology from Samsung in their display to some of the other solutions in the market at that size, they're coming in in some uh, respects, depending on whose solution you're looking at, at around half the cost. And I went in there with Wes Donahue from Small HD and looked at those images coming off of that display in a controlled environment. And 
amazing. So very, very cool. Um, didn't spend a lot of time on lenses at this show. I'm going to be going to the Lens Summit here in Portland, Oregon at the beginning of May. That's May 3rd and 4th at Kerner Camera. That's a pretty cool event where there's going to be a lot of companies. So that's when I'm going to spend my time on that. But I did like that I saw Nisi came out with additional focal lengths for their Athena Primes, which I've used on production. For the price point, those are great. Um... And then, of course, we have Zeiss with their Nano Primes. Those looked great. The other one that really impressed me and I want to jump into some more is from Steadicam. It is the Steadicam Axis system. It's coming in for a complete rig at about $9,000 US. Now, their Zephyr system, which does not include the technology which is going to be in Axis, which is the Volt technology, which is this assist, electronic assist technology with three Axis assist. Uh, that's for uh, tilt, pan, and roll, is about $3,000 less than the Zephyr system. And it's going to come with a vest and a sled and an arm and uh, a mounting bracket, but it has all of that technology built into it. I think that it's going to be really impressive. Now, they were demoing a higher-end version, which obviously will take higher payloads, but the Axis system is going to come in uh, as a system that's supporting up to about 20 pounds on a camera build, which is pretty good, and you can get a lot of kit on there, and it really sort of piqued my interest into getting back into shooting that way. I did many, 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 many years ago the original review for a product called the Smooth Shooter from Glidecam. And this is really the first low-cost uh, vest arm sled-based gimbal system uh, that, that was affordable. I mean, it really was something that when people were looking at Steadicam and the solutions that were there, even the higher-end Glidecam stuff, it, it was unaffordable for entry-level operators. And Smooth Shooter was great. And I used that system for quite some time on real-world productions. And then just sort of, that all went away. And that access system from Steadicam has me very excited. There's not a lot of data on it right now online, but we'll start to see a lot more of that in the next month or two. So those are sort of the core things that were outside of the main purpose of me going there. And what was the main purpose for me personally, it was to start to find solutions related to virtual production and AI that I thought would fit within what most of us do. Small to no crew production, corporate work, uh, in-house production, some documentary stuff. And what did I find? I found some solutions that I am very excited about diving into more in the future. So number one on the list is from a company called Lightcraft. And I spent a fair amount of time with the company at the show. They were in the Axoon booth because there is a tie-in, a sort of marriage between the Axoon Simo products and this app called JetSet. And JetSet comes in three different flavors. There's the basic one, which is free to users, and it will allow you to, to create tracking information. It does real-time composites, which are really previews, just so you understand how the system works. And then what you do is everything gets put together in post-production for a final render. But there's so much technology in Lightcraft's JetSet apps in terms of what it can do that I have a lot of education that I need to go through to really figure all of this out in terms of how it's going to work for us in a virtual production setting. And one of the big things that I wanted to talk to the company about was the realities of not necessarily the brain bar side of the market, the higher end production side of the market, but exactly who, at least when I spoke with Elliot um, from the company, 
what their original intention was and is, which is to democratize virtual production. So you've got Jet Set, the free app, then you have Jet Set Pro, which unlocks features inside of your iPhone where you can do 4K and more advanced features become available to you. And then the really exciting thing is that when you are marrying the uh, Jet Set app with your iPhone to a cine camera, mirrorless camera, digital cinema camera, using the CMO Pro, what you can do is you can calibrate all of your lenses on your cine camera to the Jet Set app. And then that way, when you're actually doing everything for virtual production, it is accurate in terms of real versus virtual camera and all of that tracking data being married together properly. That way, when you get into post-production and you marry these things up, it all works together. So super exciting. And that third workflow is part of what's called Jet Set Cine, and there is a subscription model. The highest end one is $80 a month. And quite honestly, if you're going into virtual production, $80 a month is not a lot of money. So um, this is tip of the iceberg, but what I'm seeing and the potential for that app and what it could do to again, democratizing virtual production has me very excited. I did identify what I call pain points during that time I spent with Lightcraft at the show. And what we're going to do is have some follow-up to that and start talking out those pain points and seeing if we can start to address them and eliminate them. So I'm excited. If, um, if they're willing to spend that time with me, I'm willing to spend the time with them. And hopefully we can get this to a place where it is as straightforward as it can be in what they're trying to accomplish. But I think it can get there. And it's not overly complicated right now. There are just pain points. And for the end user, there needs to be, I think, a little bit more guidance because there are definitely people out there who are willing to spend a tremendous amount of time figuring things out. If you want an app and a solution to be adopted by a larger group of people that are in the production industry, you really need to get rid of those pain points. Number two on the list is just mind-bending. In fact, when I was speaking with Elliot from Lightcraft, he had mentioned this company, Beeble, B-E-E-B-L-E. And uh, you go check it out at Beeble.ai. They have an app right now called Switchlight. And I didn't understand what Elliot was saying when I was at the booth originally, because he was saying it had something to do with the post-production process and it could be married with uh, you know, Lightcraft's Jet Set app. And there was some tie-in that could occur. And I kind of uh, kind of blew it off. I was like, oh, that's that's a pain point. Well, when I was over in South Hall, I, for some reason, felt the force drawing me to the back wall where there was a few little stands, not the big fancy ones that were there for the big companies. And there was this, this booth it was tiny. It was a couple of tables with a monitor and a couple of laptops. And they had this app called Switchlight. And it really is a relighting app for, um, for, for post-production, right? You take what you've shot in production and it does a multi-step process for, um, for basically extracting all of the information, depth data. Um, it's just creating a mask. It, it Just go to the website to sort of see what's happening here. And then they did another thing where I stood on a, a mark with a phone and they, they basically extracted from a, what seemed like a two-dimensional, <laughs> you know, uh, photograph, 3D data and then mapped me into this 3D environment, which was, again, just kind of mind-blowing. Well, that's kind of interesting, the idea of relighting in post, but 
when I started to talk to uh, Hoon from the, the company, he's the CEO, and uh, uh, Ninja, like Ninja, but with an M, uh, kind of, the team was awesome. And they were all uh, primarily developers. They're based in Seoul, Korea. And it's obvious that when they first started to develop the app, they were really trying to develop it for the visual effects community. But upon sort of a conversation with them and talking out what they're looking at and what I would be looking at, there was sort of a a, a mind meld and we were all kind of thinking the same thing. I was verbalizing what they've been discussing internally, which... Um, which is a lot more than just what the app is doing right now. So I think both Lightcraft, who makes Jet Set, which is harnessing, obviously, the LiDAR capabilities of you know the iPhone and, and what something like the 15 Pro and the 15 Pro Max can do, and Switch Lite, which also seems to be doing uh, similar but very different things. They're focused on some different areas. It's not about real-time virtual production. It's a component of the of the workflow. I, I think the combination of those two companies were the two most interesting companies when it comes to the production side of what's going to be happening with virtual production and generative AI and using AI to do things that we couldn't have done in the past. And there's some very, very, very smart people between uh, between those two companies or in both of those companies, both in Beeble and, uh, and Lightcraft. And I think that they are two companies to look out for very, very seriously. I'm also, like Lightcraft, going to be having lots of follow-up with Beeble and talking to them about Switch Lite and where that product is going. And again, uh, reducing pain points because it's great when you see a demo and it blows your mind. It's another thing when you open an app and you start to use it as an end user. And what you really want to do is make sure that those solutions think in similar ways to the way we think in production. If they don't do that, and there's an assumption that we can find where something is or how to use it or what the workflow is, then it's sort of a game over. So with both of those companies, most of the conversations are not, uh, let's see how your technology can advance or expand in a certain way. It's about taking the technology they have and making sure that it is as usable as possible for us and taking away those pain points. The last thing that I'm going to talk about is really sort of that thing that that along with a Mac, you know, base system, which is great, but um but I think that PCs factor into this conversation. And one of the reasons that they do is while a solution like um, Unreal Engine is available for both Mac and PC, it is somewhat crippled on the Mac side. And maybe that's going to change in the future, but you can't really take advantage of everything that Unreal can do, especially from a lighting standpoint, without having an NVIDIA um, GPU that you're running and NVIDIA GPUs, if you didn't know, don't run in modern day Macs. They're silicon and uh, they're great and they do amazing things, but a PC is part of the package. To that end, uh, at least at the moment, though I had a conversation with them at the show, Beeble.ai uh, and their Switch Lite product is not available on the Mac right now. It is a PC or Windows and Linux-based solution, so you can't even run that on a Mac. So what does that mean? Well, for me, it means... <laughs> Last time I checked, I don't have a, a PC running here. And the one company that I think had a solution that makes a lot of sense and is really tuned towards creators and creatives 
was Puget Systems. And Puget has something now called the Puget Mobile 17-inch laptop. I'm drawn to laptops because I travel and because I have productions that happen on set or on location all over the place. And if I'm going to eventually start to integrate some of these solutions from companies like Lightcraft, though that is Mac and PC, obviously, uh, Beeble, maybe they'll do a Mac, Pi's ready. Uh, and, you know, Strata is really web-based, so I think that that's sort of agnostic. But this laptop from Puget Systems is really designed in tune to creatives. So it has a fixed CPU, it has a fixed GPU for that purpose. And then what you can do is you can customize that laptop so that you can add more RAM up to 96 gigs. And very interestingly, which is definitely not something you're doing on a Mac-based laptop, is you can add up to three hard drives. So you could say one hard drive is for, um, you know, sort of your operating system and your applications. One would really be sort of your, your um, cache and render kind of drive. And then the, the other drive would really be for your assets and, uh, you know, the things that you're working with. So, really fascinating. Those drives can be different sizes. They're all uh, NVMe drives that are available on there. And cost for both RAM and storage, definitely more affordable than if you were specking out a MacBook Pro. You're really looking if I'm looking at it seriously with multi drives and more RAM than the base um, on the system, which I believe is 32, but you can go up to 96 gigs, you're looking at around $5,000 US for that Puget Mobile 17. And if you're using that with solutions like Jet Set and Switch Lite and, you know, the other solutions that are coming out there. Of course, the big advantage there is also, you know, you're running something like uh, Unreal Engine and maybe Blender, all things that I need to at least dip my toes into to have a more than a cursory understanding of for what I want to get into, then I think that's pretty reasonable for that Puget Mobile 17. So all companies that I am uh, not only uh, spending time with or did spend time with at the show, but will be spending time with post NAB to talk about their solutions. I'm going to lick this thing somehow in terms of how we get into this without the brain bar, without the enormous cost of entry. That's what I'm trying to do. I've been looking at it for the last two to two and a half years. And this is the first time where I have some degree of not only confidence that it can happen, but I feel like the solutions are there. They just need to be finessed a little bit, and I need to understand how to use them and work with them so that we can get to the finish line. And of course, the end goal for me is that we can do this in a photorealistic way. So it doesn't feel like we're just in a 3D rendered video game, but we're putting people, whether it's for interviews or product demonstrations or to do a cooking show or whatever it is, we're putting them in environments that feel realistic and they sell that way to the viewer. That's also part of the deal. All right. I've been rambling for a while here. I apologize that you've had to uh, see this mug and listen to me talk about this. I'm very excited about what can happen in the future. I've got a lot of work to do. And as long as these companies are willing to spend time with me, I'm willing to spend time with them to learn more about this, and hopefully we will all benefit from that going forward. That's my post-NAB episode. I'm just now going to have to get into all of this stuff with these companies, and as we start to do that, you know how it goes. Big thanks to my sponsors that are with me on the channel. We've got more coming in the future and more content, of course. Don't forget to, and to, and I'll see you on the next episode of The Daily Drop.